All right, welcome to lesson eight for small unmanned aircraft loading. We'll be reviewing weight, stability, center of gravity, aircraft load. The FAA wants remote pilots to understand how your small unmanned aircraft's performance is affected by the four aerodynamic forces of flight involving thrust, drag, weight, and lift, and also referred to and known as power, friction, gravity, and lift, respectively. Understanding how these forces work and knowing how to control them with the use of power and flight controls are essential to flight. It's worth repeating to say that it is the remote pilot's responsibility to ensure that every flight can be accomplished safely, does not pose an undue hazard, and does not increase the likelihood of a loss of control of the aircraft. The remote pilot in command is to ensure that any object attached to or carried by the small unmanned aircraft is secure and does not adversely affect the flight characteristics or controllability of the aircraft, including any payloads or cameras that may affect the small unmanned aircraft's weight and or center of gravity, also referred to as CG. Now, to ensure that the unmanned aircraft center of gravity limits are not exceeded, the remote pilot should follow the aircraft's loading instructions specified in the owner's manual. Now, if one is not provided, that is, if an owner's manual is not provided with your small unmanned aircraft, follow the instructions as specified in the pilot's operating handbook, the UAS flight manual, which you can obtain at the FAA.gov website. That question may be on your exam. Balance, stability, and center of gravity. The center of gravity, or CG, is the point at which your aircraft is perfectly balanced. The precise location of the center of gravity is basically a theoretical location as where its location on an aircraft depends on the distribution of overall weight on the aircraft. With a multi-rotor aircraft like an SUAS, it's imperative to ensure any and all weight is correctly distributed or attached according to the manufacturer's recommendations. An unmanned aircraft that is loaded out of balance may exhibit unexpected and unsafe flight characteristics. The remote pilot in command must consider the consequences of an overweight aircraft if an emergency condition arises. Although a maximum gross takeoff weight may be specified, the aircraft may not always safely take off with this load under all conditions. Conditions that affect takeoff and climb performance such as height elevation, high air temperatures, high humidity, remember high density altitudes, may require a reduction in weight before flight is attempted. Other factors to consider prior to takeoff are runway launch area lengths, if you're flying a fixed wing aircraft, a surface slope, surface wind, and the presence of obstacles. Weight changes during flight also have a direct effect on aircraft performance, with excessive fuel burn being the most common weight change that takes place during flight. As fuel is used, the aircraft becomes lighter and performance is improved, but this could have a negative effect on balance. The FAA permits loads to be jettisoned, provided it can be performed without injury or damage to ground crew, civilians, or property. The four forces of flight, thrust, drag, weight, and lift. Now, understanding how these forces work and knowing how to control them with the use of power and flight controls are essential to flight and especially crucial to an SUAS because of their small size. Even the smallest changes can greatly affect its center of gravity. Now, if the CG is too far aft or to the rear of your aircraft, the aircraft becomes more difficult to control, which also means more difficult to recover from a stall. 
So here we have thrust or power. That's the forward force or thrust produced by the propeller and engine, which opposes or overcomes the force of drag. Drag or friction, a rearward or slowing force or friction caused by disruption of airflow by the wing, rotor, fuselage, and other protruding objects. Weight is gravity the combined load of the aircraft itself and everything attached, pulling the aircraft downward because of the force of gravity. Now, weight gravity opposes lift and acts vertically downward through the aircraft's center of gravity. And then we have lift opposes the downward force of weight and is produced by the dynamic effect of the differences in air pressure. Just remember that when your SUAS is flying in a straight and level unaccelerated flight, lift equals weight and thrust equals drag. That will likely be on your exam. Now, although the majority of SUAS operators will be using multi-rotor quadcopters with a fixed static camera payload and or a static center of gravity, the FAA still wants remote pilots to fully understand how changes in the center of gravity can affect flight performance. And the FAA may often refer to fixed wing aircraft in parts of the knowledge exam. Excessive weight reduces the flight performance in almost every respect, including a shorter endurance, which can compromise the structural integrity of an unmanned aircraft. At slower air speeds, the maximum available lifting force is only slightly greater than the amount necessary to support the weight of the small unmanned aircraft. However, at higher speeds, the capacity of the flight controls or a strong gust and wind may increase the load factor beyond all safe limits. The load factor on the wings of an aircraft may be increased any time the aircraft is subjected to maneuvers other than straight and level flight. And remember that, that may be on the exam. Load factor on the wings of an aircraft may be increased any time the aircraft is subjected to maneuvers other than straight and level flight. When an unmanned aircraft is flying in a straight and level unaccelerated flight, lift equals weight and thrust equals drag. Now this does not mean the four forces are equal, but rather it means the opposing forces are equal to each other and thereby cancel the effects of each other. So adding weight or a payload to your aircraft can result in any of the following deficient characteristics. It can result in a higher takeoff speed, longer takeoff run, reduced rate and angle of climb, lower maximum altitude, shorter range, reduced cruising speed, reduced maneuverability, higher stalling speed, higher approach and landing speed, and longer landing roll. Stability in an aircraft affects two areas significantly, maneuverability and controllability. Maneuverability, the quality of an aircraft that permits it to be maneuvered easily and to withstand the stresses imposed by the maneuvers. It is governed by the aircraft's weight, inertia, size, structural strength, and power source. Controllability, the capability of an aircraft to respond to the pilot's control, especially with regard to flight path and altitude. It is the quality of the aircraft's response to the pilot's control application when maneuvering the aircraft, regardless of its stability characteristics. Remember this one, taking off on an uphill slope with a fixed wing aircraft will require an increased distance to obtain lift. So here we're gonna review some load factors and this very likely will be on your final exam. An unmanned aircraft's performance can be decreased due to an increase in load factor 
when the aircraft is operated in maneuvers other than straight and level flight. Load increases at a significant rate after a bank has reached 45 degrees or 50 degrees, as the wing must produce lift equal to these load factors if altitude is to be maintained. The load factor chart is used to determine load factors in a given radius banked turn. So in this example, if a small unmanned aircraft weighs 15 pounds and the bank angle in degrees is 45 degrees, you would use the following formula to calculate the load factor. So you would find 15 and then multiply that by 1.414 and that would equal your pounds and then you round that up. So if your 15 pound small unmanned aircraft was making a 45 degree turn, it would need to support the weight equal to at least 22 pounds. It's really interesting. So you use this chart. So here's your 45 degrees and there's the calculation 1.414 and that's how you reach 21.21 or 22 pounds. Another example, if you had a 25 pound small unmanned aircraft making a 60 degree bank, so you just follow in the chart 60 degrees and you find the number and you multiply it. So your 25 pound drone would need to sustain a weight of 50 pounds in a 60 degree banked angle turn. One thing to remember is the load factor increases at a terrific rate after a bank has reached 45 or 50 degrees. That is likely going to be on your exam and it is right in here is where they state the load factor increases at a terrific rate not at 60, not at 70, they're saying right in 40 or 50. Stalls and critical angle of attack, COA. Any aircraft within the limits of its structure may be stalled at any airspeed regardless of its gross weight. When a sufficiently high angle of attack, AOA, is a imposed upon the aircraft, the smooth flow of air over the airfoil or wing breaks up and separates, producing an abrupt sudden loss of lift. So the angle of attack is defined as the angle at which the cord of the wing meets the relative wind. So remember some of this, it may appear on your exam as well the cord of the wing meets the relative wind. The cord is a straight line from the leading edge, the front edge, as you can see in this graph, to the trailing edge of the wing. And at low angles of attack, the airflow over the top flows smoothly. And that produces lift with a relatively small amount of drag. But as the angle of attack increases, lift and drag increase. However, the airflow separates from the upper surface of the wing and backfills or turbulence, and that thereby reduces lift and increases drag. Again, this results in a stall, which can lead to total loss of control if the angle of attack is not reduced. So it's important for the pilot to understand that a stall is the result of exceeding the critical angle of attack, not of insufficient airspeed. All right, we're done with that lesson. I told you they'd be getting quicker and shorter. Let's review a few questions. A stall occurs when the smooth airflow over the SUAS wing is disrupted and the lift degenerates rapidly. This is caused when the wing, we just reviewed it, exceeds its critical angle of attack. 
What could be a consequence of operating an SUAS above its maximum allowable weight? This question may likely be on your exam. What could be the consequence? There's shorter endurance. Wouldn't be a faster takeoff speed. When operating an SUAS, the remote pilot should consider that the load factor on the wings may be increased any time the small unmanned aircraft is subjected to maneuvers other than straight and level flight. That may be on your final exam. To ensure an SUAS's center of gravity limits are not exceeded, follow the aircraft loading instructions specified in. That would be, there is no aircraft weight and balance handbook. That would be the pilot's operating handbook, the UAS flight manual. According to Title 14, Code of Federal Regulations, Part 107, who is responsible for determining the performance of the small unmanned aircraft? Well, it always falls on the remote pilot in command. And we'll just say that anytime you get a question regarding who is responsible during a flight operation, always going to be the remote pilot in command, the person holding the Part 107 certification. Before each flight, the remote pilot in command must ensure that well, they must ensure that the objects carried on the SUAS are secured. And that could be a camera. The angle of attack at which an airfoil or wing stalls will, will it increase if the center of gravity is moved forward, change with an increase in gross weight, or remain the same regardless of gross weight? So the correct answer for that is, will remain the same regardless of gross weight. What basic flight maneuver Increase the load factor on an SUAS as compared to straight and level flight. What basic flight maneuver will increase the load factor on a drone? So if it's climbing or turning, it's not a stall. A stall would be the result of, and the answer is going to be turns that increases that load factor. When loading cameras or other equipment on the SUAS, mount items in a manner that does not adversely affect the center of gravity. And lastly, what effect does an uphill terrain slope have on a launch performance? So if you're taking off heading uphill, Think about that one. It increases your launch distance. Yes, it does. When operating an SUAS, the remote pilot in command is responsible for using the weight and balance data from the manufacturer. What if they didn't supply one? So it, it would be the most current weight and balance data. The term angle of attack is defined as the angle. Remember that one? Now this has that strange definition with the cord line. So it's between the wing cord line and relative wind. All right, made it through that one. Completed lesson eight, loading and performance in the four forces of flight. It's getting easier and quicker. Practice exam questions down at the bottom to answer on your own, and we'll see you in the next lesson.
Bye.